how to generate free electricity from the rotation of the Earth. And it's based on an invention by Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday himself, the father of electromagnetic discovery, tested it with his own hands in the 1830s and gave his verdict. The Earth's slow spin through its magnetic field could never make electricity. The idea was buried, forgotten, untouchable. Yet in March 2025, a faint signal appeared, a quiet spark of power born directly from Earth's rotation. For generations, science had said this was impossible. But sometimes the world hides truths in plain sight, waiting for patient eyes. This is the story of how a whisper of voltage has reopened a door thought closed forever. The Old Verdict In the early 1800s, science was still learning to see electricity and magnetism as parts of the same story. Michael Faraday stood at the center of that search. He was not a man of wealth or formal training, yet his mind reshaped the world. With coils of wire, magnets, and rotating disks, he revealed that motion through a magnetic field could create a current. That simple idea gave birth to the electric generator, one of the cornerstones of modern life. But when he turned his attention to the Earth itself, the result was far less dramatic. The planet spins every day beneath the sky, and it carries with it an invisible magnetic cloak. If moving a piece of metal through a magnetic field makes electricity, could the Earth's own motion be used in the same way? Faraday asked this question directly. He built experiments with solid metal conductors, carefully aligned to test the effect. No matter how he arranged them, the outcome was always the same. Nothing. His reasoning was clear. Because we move with the Earth, there is no relative motion between us and the field. Without relative motion, there is no induction. That conclusion hardened into doctrine. Generations of students were told the same story. Teachers repeated it as fact, and textbooks carried it forward. The Earth's spin, they said, could never be tapped for power. It was a dead idea, a road that ended in silence. For nearly two centuries, no one truly challenged that verdict. It rested quietly in the background of science, waiting for someone to look again. The spark of controversy. More than a century after Faraday, the subject was still considered closed. But science has a way of circling back to old questions. In 2016, two researchers, Christopher Chiba and Kevin Hand, began to wonder if the story had really been finished. They studied the problem carefully and noticed something strange. Faraday's conclusion was based on solid conductors. But what if the conductor wasn't solid? What if it were hollow, shaped like a shell? Their mathematics suggested that in such a case, Earth's rotation might actually create a measurable current. It was a bold claim. The physics community met it with raised eyebrows. It seemed like wishful thinking, another attempt to overturn a principle that had been settled for generations. A year later, in 2017, an experiment was attempted to test their idea. The setup was crude, and the results came back empty. To many, this was proof enough that the theory was flawed. Still, the thought lingered. Hollow shells, unusual geometries, New ways of letting the magnetic field interact, something about it refused to disappear. A door had been cracked open, even if only slightly. And sometimes, that is all science needs to begin again. The 2025 Experiment By 2025, curiosity had grown into determination. A small team, led by Christopher Chiba, joined by Kevin Hand and Thomas Chiba, decided to design an experiment that left no room for doubt. They wanted to test the theory under the strictest possible conditions. Their device was not large or complex. At its heart was a hollow cylinder about the length of a forearm and no wider than a finger. It was made from a special ferrite material, 
chosen because it allowed Earth's magnetic field to seep through while keeping out unnecessary electrical noise. The shape and the material were both essential. The cylinder was carefully positioned. Its axis was placed so that it stood at a right angle to the invisible lines of the magnetic field and also to the motion of the Earth spin beneath it. In that exact orientation, the effect, if it existed, would be strongest. They worked with extraordinary care. The setup was shielded from outside interference, stray radio signals, thermal effects, or even the faint electric hum of surrounding equipment. Nothing was left unchecked. Calculations were made for their exact latitude, for the local strength of the magnetic field, and for the speed of Earth's rotation at their location. From this, they knew exactly what they should see if the theory was true. And then they tested it. For the first time, the cylinder produced a faint, steady signal. It was small, almost ghost-like, but it was there. A continuous trickle of voltage flows only because the Earth is turning inside its own magnetic cloak. The measured signal. The numbers were tiny, but they carried weight. The device produced a steady voltage of around 17 millionths of a volt. The current was only a few dozen billionths of an ampere. On paper, that adds up to just a few nanowatts of power, far less than the energy needed to light even the faintest LED. But what mattered was not the size of the signal. What mattered was its consistency. When the cylinder was rotated, the current shifted exactly as predicted. Aligned with Earth's spin, the signal faded to nothing. Turned the other way, it flipped direction. Placed at a right angle, it reached its peak. Every step matched the theoretical map drawn years earlier. The researchers went further. They repeated the experiment at another site, under different skies, with the same results. They tested solid cylinders, identical in size and material, and found nothing. They tested shells made of other substances that blocked the field, and again, no signal. Only the hollow ferrite shell responded, just as the theory demanded. What they had measured was not noise or accident. It was the planet itself, turning through its own magnetic field, whispering in the language of electricity. Why Faraday missed it? Faraday's insight into electricity was unmatched, yet even he was bound by the tools of his time. When he asked whether Earth's spin could make power, he reached for the conductors he knew, solid bars of metal. His logic was sound. A solid conductor turning with the Earth shows no relative motion through the magnetic field. No motion means no current. His experiments proved this, but hidden in that reasoning was a quiet condition. The shape mattered. A hollow conductor, thin like a shell, does not behave the same way. The magnetic field interacts differently when it can slip inside rather than being forced around a solid mass. This was the loophole no one saw in the 1830s. Faraday was not wrong. His conclusion was complete for the materials and designs he tested. What he could not know was that the geometry itself could change the answer. The new experiment does not rewrite his mathematics. It moves beyond it. Sometimes the boundary of knowledge is not broken by contradiction, but by stepping carefully into places no one thought to look. What it means. The signal they found will not light cities or power homes. Earth's magnetic field is simply too weak and the effect too delicate to ever produce large amounts of energy. Even scaling up the cylinder many times would still yield only a faint trickle of current. In practical terms, it is closer to a scientific curiosity than a new energy source. But that does not make it useless. For devices that need almost no power, tiny sensors buried in the ground, instruments left in remote places, probes drifting in space, a source that never runs dry could be valuable. Imagine a sensor at the bottom of the ocean or on the surface of a distant moon, drawing a whisper of power forever without batteries or refueling. 
The discovery also holds symbolic weight. It shows that what was once ruled impossible can, under the right conditions, be made real. It reminds us that even the most familiar planet, spinning beneath our feet, still hides secrets. Sometimes, the meaning of a breakthrough is not in its size, but in the new paths it quietly opens. Looking ahead. For now, the result stands as a beginning, not a conclusion. Other laboratories will need to test the idea with their own equipment, in their own corners of the world. Replication is the true test of science, and only then will the finding become solid ground. If confirmed, new questions will follow. Could different materials draw out a stronger response? Could the geometry be reshaped to capture more of the field's motion? Might coils, layers, or novel alloys amplify the effect? Each adjustment offers a chance to refine what is only a faint signal today. Beyond Earth, the possibilities widen. Planets like Jupiter possess magnetic fields far stronger than ours. A device there might produce currents many times larger. Even Mars, with its weaker but more complex field, could provide insights into how universal the effect really is. The 2025 experiment is not the final word. It is a first step, a reminder that the universe often rewards persistence. What begins as a spark in one small cylinder may inspire a generation of experiments that stretch far beyond our own world. What once seemed impossible has now been touched. A faint current, born from Earth's own turning, whispers that nature still holds surprises. Faraday's shadow stretches across centuries, yet even his certainty was not the final word. Science moves this way, step by step, question by question, until the old edges of knowledge are gently moved outward. This discovery may never power cities, but it powers something else. Wonder. It proves that hidden doors can still open, and it leaves us asking, what other impossibilities are waiting, silent, for us to listen closely enough to hear them?